Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be looking at a bunch of Vossi knives. We've got some brand new ones that we're going to be reviewing and these three right here have been probably seeing the most pocket time as of late. I reviewed this one, the most recent, the new Vossi Hedgehog. If you didn't see this review, definitely go check it out. I absolutely love this knife. Got their top liner lock. It's comfortable. It's easy to carry. S35 VN blade. It's very, very smooth and I've sharpened it up after the testing and it took a wicked, wicked keen edge absolutely love it and then we have the Vosteed Ankylo I reviewed this one recently and if you didn't see this review definitely definitely go check this one out this one has their new pivot locking system where you just press the pivot down like that and it releases it this is a Kickstarter campaign and like I said if you haven't seen this review go see how I test this locking system out and go see how strong this lock is and I sharpened this one up after the testing and stuff as well after the review and that L Max got oh sticky sticky sharp just an awesome knife and this one has been in the pocket quite often if you didn't get in on this kickstarter campaign it ends in 10 days it allows you to get somewhat of a cheaper price and earlier access and so if you missed out on this and haven't and you're interested in getting on this Kickstarter, I will have links to everything that you see in this video down below. And then the Vosteed Dachshund wasn't, for some reason, whenever I reviewed it, I did not connect with it as much, I think because I just had a lot of stuff that had came in at that time. So it kind of got pushed off to the wayside. I liked it. it, it was a really nice knife, but it just did not really connect with me. Well, about a month ago, I dropped it in the pocket, sharpened this up, and I absolutely love the Dachshund. It's super smooth. If you like front flippers, you have that as well, but just that thumb stud action. I like how streamlined it is because of that crossbar lock, tie scales, L-Max blade, mill tie clip that's reversible. Just an awesome knife. Well, if you are looking for a quality EDC knife, maybe similar to the Dotson, but won't break the bank like the Dotson. Dotson's around a $200 knife, somewhere in that price point. And the Volsteed Talaris may be that knife for you. This is a brand new model for Volsteed, and I almost did not give this knife a chance because it has a thumb disc. I'm not usually a fan of thumb disc, and I think it's because Emerson knives kind of ruined that for me. They're just uncomfortable for my hands. But I'm definitely glad I gave this a shot, and I'll tell you why later on. But here we have a knife that is a good size for EDC at 7.18 inches long. And it has a 3.03 inch modified sheep's foot blade of 14C 28 inch stainless steel. One of my favorite budget steels because it's such a good balance of edge retention, toughness, corrosion resistance. And because of its very fine grain structure, man, it gets ridiculously, ridiculously sharp. And Vosteed does a good job with their heat treat and they rock well these from 60 to 62 right where you want 14c to be on that upper end this is going to be an excellent utility blade shape you have just a very slight bit of belly and that tip is going to be very easy to control we did some fine precision cutting and it, it works really really well that's why this is such a good utility shape and of course this is a vol seed so it came ridiculously sharp out of box and even though this is going to be the best at utility cuts it's still going to be fairly versatile because like i said it has a very slight belly on it so you should still be able to do some cutting on a flat cutting surface the drag cuts are going to be your easiest but you know when you're doing downward cuts you can do it in a pinch grip and you still get some of that edge down onto your cutting surface depending on what you're cutting it performed really really nice on everything that i did with it i like the amount of aggression this 14c edge had on it it was slicing very very well with everything i did this one has a satin finish so during the tubing i didn't have any friction with a coating or anything it passed through the tubing great just like the dense cardboard all that stuff really really well and being that you don't have any crazy belly like you would on say a bowie shaped blade or something like that in hand cuts cardboard absolutely no problem not to mention this one has a nice flat grind that comes down nice and thin Vosti does a good job with thinning out their flat grinds at least on majority of their folders on the Talaris the flat grind comes down to 15 to 16 thousandths behind the edge so really nice slicer you know passed through the cardboard effortlessly and it did a really really good job with holding its edge all the way to the last thing I cut I I'll tell you what 
during the sisal rope cutting, I decided I want to push this one a little bit further than I usually do with the 14C knives. I'm not really trying to prove edge retention. I just want to make sure the heat treat on it's proper. I don't have any crazy chipping going on, rolling or anything like that. And it holds its edge as long as it should hold it. I'm not counting how many feet of cardboard. Even though I do count the sisal rope cuts, that's just a ballpark for me to know because I know, you know, 14C factory edge, as long as it's a decent factory edge, usually I can cut about 100 cuts and then the edge is kind of rough after that. But I usually stop it around 60, 80, depending on how long of a piece I cut. Well, this one I cut a little bit longer of a piece and we got through 150 cuts and it was absolutely blowing through the, the sisal rope. I did a very, very good job there. And I felt the edge after all that, and the edge still feels nice and sharp. I, I definitely believe I could just drop this back to about where it was. In the ergos department, the handle was nice and comfortable. These are G10 scales. They have a very nice contour on them. There's no sharp spots. And it's a fairly neutral handle. You have one small choil area that I can either choke back or if I want, I can creep up on this spot right here and choke up. And both of them are nice and comfortable. If you choke up, you can get right up to that edge if you need to do a control cut. Or if you rather to be a little safer, you can go back to that choil. Now, when I'm holding it back to that choil, the comfort level is okay, but I can kind of feel the top part of that pocket clip when I'm choked back like this. But in this choke up spot, it was very, very comfortable. It felt like I could get a lot of power into the cut. And being that I was choked up, I didn't have to worry about getting hung up up in that sharpening choil area or anything. That thumb disc stayed out of the way of all the cuts that I made. All the grips are pretty darn comfortable with this knife, like I said, because you don't have a super crazy choil besides this one, and maybe you could consider this as a forward choil area. This knife, I'd say, is probably more suited for people with medium, maybe large hands if you're going to choke up right here, but you're kind of pushing it. It's, it's a smaller knife especially compared to the Datsun. Like I said, the edge still feels good. We made 150 cuts to test by that tip also. Not bad. Now it's definitely not as sharp as it was when I first got it, but I don't expect it to. Okay, we're gonna, sh got a little, well, maybe a very minor hang up whenever I cut really slow, but that's to be expected, especially by that tip because I did my normal, you know, cutting up there with the rope and stuff but then I also did that uh fine precision cutting with that tip area and it's still you know pretty nice and sharp now that we move to the action department and like I said the thumb disc at first kind of turned me off because I'm not really a fan of thumb disc but this one is like an oversized thumb disc and it's I'm guessing it's aluminum and it's got a chamfer at the bottom so it's not sharp but you do have some texture on there so it's pretty comfortable for me to thumb flick it. Uh, reverse flick is very, very easy. And you can also use that crossbar to deploy the knife. You can easily slow roll it. And of course, it's easy to manipulate left-handed also. And being that you have that crossbar lock is totally ambidextrous. Another nice thing about this knife is that this crossbar lock is an adjustable crossbar lock. You see those three holes right there? That allows you to move the Omega spring tension forward or back, depending on if you want less tension or more tension on that locking bar, which will also create a detent for you. And unlike the clutch lock, it just has three little holes. I like the way this one's set up because it can be hard to ring those holes. And the way that Volsteed has it done, you can just slide it in that area and pull it up makes it way, way easier to get it in the one that you want it to be in. So, and I like having that option. Now to the handle area, my particular knife has this ivory G10. Now it's not like, you know, super, super white. You can see how it has like, like a grayish hue, hue to it. So it's not as bad as just plain old white. It hasn't gotten super dirty and I've carried this a good bit, but if you do get it dirty and it turns all nasty looking, you can easily wash this with soap and water and then oil it back up. It'll be good as new. If this white isn't your thing, they have a satin version with a blue micarta, which is probably my favorite. And then they have two versions that have the blacked out blade. They have like an all blacked out one and then one with the black blade and I forget the other color, but there's four different variations to choose from. Here's a shot of what their blue canvas micarta looks like on the Volsteed Courser. 
Then let's look at the hardware. You have a Torx T8 for the pivot, and unfortunately, everything else on this knife is a Torx T6. Come on, Vossi, give us all T8. That, that'd that be excellent. That way, you don't have to swap out drivers or have two different drivers. There's a lot less chances of T8 stripping out over T6s. Even though I've taken apart a lot of all seed knives, I've never had any of the screws strip on me. They kept this one nice and clean without a lanyard hole. Yeah, flow through construction. So if you need to blow this out with compressed air, you could easily do that. You have skeletonized top and bottom liners to reduce weight as much as possible. Coming in at 102.5 grams or 3.61 ounces. Nice. I like whenever they use the crossbar lock or that top liner lock. They're both very strong locking mechanisms. So if you're looking for a good work knife, you know, that's a good lock to have on a work knife and theirs usually have pretty darn good action. We have a somewhat deep carry pocket clip inset into the G10 along with those screws. Perfect size ramp for most people's jeans and it's reversible. It goes in and out of the pocket really, really nice and it carries really well. That's all you have sticking out so at least you have something to grab a hold to when pulling it out the pocket. Being that you don't have a flipper tab, it hugs this side of the pocket nicely and you could put you know, a phone or something else in there. Quick size comparison, as you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the Vosti Datsun and it's identical in length to the Vossi Corgi. It's a little longer than both the Ontario Rat 2 and the QSP Penguin. And lastly, it's a hair shorter than the Kaiser Clipper and it's a hair longer than the Civivi Elementum. And it's very similar to the brand new Volsteed Hedgehog. Quick nitpicks and complaints. I would have loved to see T8 hardware throughout. And even though I'm glad I gave the thumb disc a, a shot and I ended up liking this one, if I could choose, it would probably be a thumb stud and I understand why they went with the thumb disc on this. It allowed this one to stay nice and compact in the pocket because if they would have put a thumb stud, it would have been a lot harder to access being that the scales are so close. So, you know, it makes sense to go with the thumb disc on this one and I totally understand. But if I was going to be doing it, yeah, I probably would put a thumb stud or a thumb hole when when possible i don't think those are too possible on this one so just a nitpick there but other than that i think it's a very classy looking knife it's a good size for edc it performed very very well it has really really nice action and it carries really well in the pocket also these come in at 72 dollars so if you're looking for a little bit more affordable version of the volsteed dotson i think the talaris is a good option now we're going to talk about the Volsteed Corgi. This has been a very popular model for Volsteed and for good reason. It's a very easy one to carry. It's very streamlined and I love how that blade buries into the handle. You have a very fidgety knife as well with the back flipper and you have the front flipper that works nicely uh, depending on however you want to open the knife and you can also use that button lock to deploy it. This is going to be a very versatile blade shape because you have that low tip drop point. 14C 20M blade steel. Well now we have a brand new Corgi and this is the new Sheep's Foot. And I think I like this one even more than the drop point. This one's going to have a better utility blade shape because you have a lower tip on the sheep's foot. You still have a slight bit of belly to that tip, but not as much as this drop point does. Still 14C. This one is a satin blade with red G10, but they also offer it in the same blue micarta with a satin blade. Probably my favorite of the versions they have. These are another excellent EDC knife because they're excellent size at 7.17 inches total length. And like I said, because they fold up in a nice compact package, they're very, very easy to carry. Both of these have slicey flat grinds on them. This one's at around 15 thousandths behind the edge and the drop point has a higher flat grind. So it gets a little bit thinner at 14 thousandths behind the edge. Both knives performed outstanding. I tested the drop point Corgi a while back, but whenever I got this one, I went straight to test in it and it performed really really nice i like that blade shape so even though it's more meant for utility cuts it's still going to be fairly versatile because that slight belly you're just not going to get as much of the cutting edge onto that flat surface like you would on a drop point so if you do a lot of cutting on a flat surface then this one may be for you but if you break down a lot of boxes and in hand cuts and stuff like that or if you do a lot of precision cutting then the new sheep's foot blade is definitely going to be the one for you. You can do the same with this one, but this one makes it just a hair easier. 
I did some fine precision cutting and man, that tip is very easy to control. These came with phenomenal edges. The Vossi just does an excellent job with that. And because of the very neutral handle, it's got like a broomstick style handle, it is very comfortable no matter what grip you're holding it in, your hammer grip, I'm able to get a lot of force into cuts. It's going to be perfect because of that neutral handle. That is one nice thing about not having any crazy choils or anything. Both of these knives have the titanium plate inlay on them. So if you wanted to anodize that plate, you could. It's on both sides. And these have Volstead's patented Trek lock. And it's just a locking system that allows for multiple deployments on a button lock. It's just a track, basically, that they set up in the inside. So you got your back flipper on these, and they do have jimping. And you have a symmetrical flipper tab on both sides. Very nice snappy action. And then once you release that button, it comes falling down. And that front flipper works great. And I've tested both of these button lock on them, both of them strong button locks. I have not had any of mine fail on me. I'm, I'm knocking everything. I got I got knives on the side to do comparisons and they're all sliding forward. So super strong. And because of that locking system, you're able to have a very streamlined pocket knife. When it comes to weight, I don't know if there's any difference, but the drop point is 3.52 ounces and the sheep's foot is 3.62 ounces so yeah a little bit of a difference definitely not noticeable in the pocket from one knife to the other i love the meat tenderizer texture they have on the button lock it's not uncomfortable they knock the peaks off of it at least it gives you a good indexing point if you're in the dark and you're trying to figure out where that button is that definitely gives you some grip too from sliding off on it and you have a very fine micro milling on these g10 scales so it offers the perfect amount of grip without being overly grippy or anything. And when it comes to the Corgi, you have very, very minimalistic hardware on this. You have a pivot and one body screw and a backspacer. The pivot and this one body screw, both of those are Torx T8. And the only Torx T6 you have are for the pocket clip screws. I'm totally fine with that because you don't have to remove that unless you're swapping it to lefty. Man, the Talaris carries really, really nicely, but man, does the, the Corgi carry even better because of how streamlined it is. That pocket clip is right down the center, and that's all you have sticking out. Holds it perfect, and that pocket clip stayed out of the way of my palms during all the testing I did with this one and the drop point. It is inset into that G10 along with those screws, and I, I think that's a perfect amount of ramp, and good tension there now quick nitpicks and complaints i don't have much on this i only really have one nitpick and I, i've gotten over it already i used to get really hung up on this a lot and I, I think i'm i'm good with it now but the blade to handle ratio on both of these is not the best you can see that tip of that blade hopefully you can see that stops about where this pocket clip ends right here so if you wanted to that where that screw is all that could come off and on the sheep's foot you can you can probably see it a little bit better i'm shining some light in there you can kind of see it a little bit better there you go perfect there so you have probably about the same i think it was because they were trying to make this one legal in more areas especially areas that have three and under blade laws because this blade falls right underneath that three inch mark at 2.98 inches so i get it there unlike the talaris which goes just a hair over that three inch mark so it's like 3.03 inches long so if you got a, a mean cop you know this one's gonna be illegal for you if you have three and under blade law so this way you still have a full handle on there for even large extra large hands because if you choked all the way up like this i have quite a bit of knife sticking out so should fit pretty much anybody's hands so when it comes to choosing that perfect edc knife you got to decide you know what is important to you these in my opinion are excellent sizes they're going to be excellent utility blade shapes and they're going to be fairly versatile because they both have a slight bit of belly on that edge but both of them performed outstanding. They were great slicers, came super sharp out of box, and they both carry exceptionally well. 
two very important things when it comes to an EDC knife. Not to mention the ergos are outstanding. This one has a very neutral handle. It's very, very comfortable for my hands. This one as well, and I can choke up on this one if I want. I can without a doubt recommend both of these knives. I absolutely love them. I think they're quality made knives and I don't think you'll be disappointed, especially if you're looking for something that's nice and slim and sleek in the pocket. If either one of these interests you, I will have them linked down in the description and I'll try to link some of my favorites as well, like the Anklo, the Dodson, the new Hedgehog, and of course, some of my favorites from the very beginning, the Nightshade and the Raccoon. This is the brand new Raccoon with the top liner lock. <laughs> man, oh man, is it nice. All of them are outstanding EDC knives. I don't think you'll be disappointed, especially if you like a good performer that carries well. Also, let me know, do you own any Vosteed knives? If so, what is your favorite model from Vosteed? And what do you look for most in a good EDC knife? So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave those down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. <laughs>